Hello, everyone. My name is Nelson DeMello, Trinity's Registrar. Welcome to this very special event. This will be the first and hopefully only virtual convocation in Trinity's history. While there may be physical distance between us, we hope this ceremony will unite Trinity in celebration of our students' achievements and that it demonstrates the strength and resilience of our community. Later on in the ceremony, the Chancellor will confer degrees in absentia. But before that, the college statutes require that candidates for degrees be presented to Caput for their approval. Caput is a group formed by the college's chancellor, the provost, and members of the faculty. Let's join them now. Hello, members of Caput, and thank you all for being here. Um, as the college registrar, I will now present our degree candidates using a Latin script. I will be confirming to you that the candidates have completed all of the appropriate requirements, and I will ask you if it is indeed your decision that they should be admitted to their various degrees. Hopefully your response will be placket, or it is. So without further ado, supplicant reurentis vestris ili quorum, nomina recetatarus sum, ut ani secundum statuta debiti aquoque in sui studis recte, reteque completi una com omnibus exercitis per leges et consuetudines academiae requisitis, Sufficient ais ut un gradum petunt adventantur. In gradum magistri in divinitate, Adam Joseph Brown, Jennifer Margaret Galachinsky, Yuri Haladio, Peter Saunders Newell, Donovan Robert Price, Martha Ann Finley Riddle, John J. Tarodes, Julian Randolph Williams, Yage Yu. In Gradum Magistri in Studis Theologicus, Charles David Andrews, Paul Gerges, Max Greening Harwood, Thomas Kenton Hubschmid, James William Knoll Leach, James Bruce Matheson. In Gradum Magistri in Theologia, Ralitza Caneva. In Gradum Doctoris in Ministerio, Jeffrey Reddy, Kyle Michael Bradley Wagner. So, members of Caput, Placetne re rentis vestris ut admitantur in hos gradus? Placet. Thank you, members of Caput. Up next, Provost Mio Moran will address convocation. But first, to our graduates, we want to say congratulations. Congratulations, congratulations. Well done, everyone. Well done. Congratulations. 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 Greetings, everyone. It's my very great pleasure to welcome all of you, our graduating students, our prize winners, a family and friends to this in absentia divinity convocation video. As I'm sure you can imagine, this is a first for all of us and something we certainly didn't anticipate, as I'm sure that you did not either. We know it doesn't fully replace the in-person ceremony, but we look forward to celebrating with you next year when we can all safely gather. In the meantime, we didn't want to let this very special moment go by without recognizing your commitment and your perseverance and taking a moment to congratulate you in the midst of this strange ending to your graduate work. As our graduating masters and doctoral students, you're a wonderful group, a great credit to Trinity College and to TST. So my first and my very happy task is to offer our college's profound congratulations to you for all of your hard work, your accomplishments and your contributions. As students of Trinity College, we know that you'll go on to make a positive difference in the world around you, just as Trinity students have done ever since Bishop Strawn founded our college in 1851. Our faculty and staff that have worked with you, gotten to know you during your time here, are so proud of everything you've done, how you've grown, and I especially want to extend their good wishes as you graduate. We also know that for any graduate, the commitment and support of their family and friends is vital to success in studies and of course also in life. And so I would like to extend a special virtual thank you and congratulations to all of them as well on behalf of Trinity College. 
Today, I'm also delighted to acknowledge and welcome Trinity's two honorary degree recipients. Uh, the most, most Reverend Colin Johnson recently retired as Bishop of Toronto and Metropolitan of the Ecclesiastical Province of Ontario will receive an honorary fellowship. He earned his Master's of Divinity from Trinity College in 1977 and was awarded an Honorary Doctor of Divinity from Wycliffe and Trinity in 2005. This Honorary Fellowship is offered in recognition of his long and distinguished leadership in the Anglican Church of Canada and the wider Global Anglican Communion, his championing of many important important initiatives for the Diocese of Toronto and for his generous mentorship of seminarians and students in the Faculty of Divinity at Trinity College where he is an esteemed and respected graduate and member of the community. Today we're also delighted to bestow the degree of Doctor of Divinity Honoris Causa on the Right Reverend Mark MacDonald, the National Indigenous Anglican Bishop for the Anglican Church of Canada. This honorary degree is offered in recognition of his significant leadership to both the Anglican Church of Canada and the World Council of Churches, as well as for his service following the publication of the Truth and Reconciliation Committee report in building relations between Indigenous and settlers peoples, and also in promoting the implementation of the Truth and Reconciliation Committee's call to actions. Also presiding at this in absentia ceremony, I'm very happy to welcome our wonderful Trinity Chancellor, the Honourable William C. Graham, as well as Dean Christopher Britton, Trinity's Dean of Divinity and Margaret E. Fleck Chair in Anglican Studies. And so students, once again, congratulations to all of you. I hope you enjoy this important day and I and the whole college look forward to celebrating with you in person when we are able. Congratulations and enjoy. At this point in the ceremony, it is my distinct honour to present the degree candidates to the Chancellor for conferral of degrees in absentia. Thank you for being with us tonight, Chancellor. Are you ready? Yes. yes. Prionorablus Concolare, Totaque Universitas Presento Wobis Hosci Hominus, Coscio Tam Moribus, Quam Doctrina Esse Idonius, Qui Admitantur in Gradus Varius. Ego, Actoritate Mea, Universitatis Toronto and Census, Admito Vos in Gradus Varius, in absentia in Nomine Patri, Ephelia, a Spiritus Sancti. Amen. Thank you, Chancellor, and congratulations to our new graduates. I would now like to invite Chris Britton to address convocation. Graduates of the Faculty of Divinity, greetings to you, your family, and your friends. I'm delighted to mark the official completion of your degree programs with this virtual token of congratulations. On such a celebratory occasion, I fear that some of the remarks I want to share with you might feel a bit somber due to the situation we're currently in, so I hope that the hat I'm wearing lightens the tone at least somewhat. It's hard to celebrate a graduation without a great ceremonial hat. We're living through a time of disruption and uncertainty. But I trust that your studies at Trinity College are serving you well in this situation. For as students of theology, we've studied together the profound mystery that surrounds life and human relationships. And we've learned together that growth and wisdom come only through change, challenge, and development. Rowan Williams describes the study of theology as involving recognition of the risk and openness that characterize revelation. For Vladimir Losky, the path towards knowledge of God proceeds by negation, involving, and here I quote him, progressively setting aside all that can be known in order to draw near to the unknown in the darkness of absolute ignorance, end quote. And as the Easter story has recently reminded us, disruption and uncertainty do not threaten the discovery of truth or the capacity to encounter deep love. In this light, the lessons you've learned at Trinity College are needed now as much as they've ever been. 
Recently, I recalled how the novelist Marcel Proust discovered the effect that living through the First World War was having on him. Quoting him, Just as people used to live in God, so I live in the war. This sense of inhabiting an all-encompassing crisis is how many experience the COVID-19 pandemic. It feels to them, at least some people, like it's swallowed up all of reality and their lives along with it. The result is, of course, for some, profound disorientation, anxiety, fear for the future. Here, Proust's lament during the First World War illuminates what's at stake in the aftermath of this pandemic. It highlights the question of what it is that gives shape to our sense of reality and meaning. In other words, what ontology of being serves as the focal point of our attention, i.e. worship? What forms our habitual patterns of living, in other words, our liturgy, and guides our priorities and decision-making, in other words, our morality? I believe that your time at Trinity has helped to prepare and answer such questions in ways that will be life-giving in whatever challenges you face from this day on. Each of you have worked hard to deepen your knowledge and understanding of God and of God's creation, to develop skills and insights into human relationships and communities, as well as to deepen your own emotional and spiritual maturity. This learning will, I trust, equip you to not only to navigate through the challenges that confront you and your loved ones at this time, but also prepare you to help support others struggling to find their way through difficulties and fears of any future challenges. Indeed, this is what Trinity has been offering to its students since its founding. In 1832, a terrible cholera epidemic struck Ontario and Quebec, killing one-twelfth of the population of Toronto. John Strawn, the founder of Trinity College, took a leading role in bringing relief to widows and orphans. And when the cholera epidemic returned again in 1834, his outreach activities earned him the deep respect of his fellow citizens, and he was presented with a great award when the danger passed. In the midst of this crisis, Strawn wrote the following, quoting him, Our duty, as you will understand, throws us into the very midst of such calamities, as at no time more than during such contagious sickness do people require the consolations of religion. And by the consolations of religion, I think Strawn means not only strength of conviction and moral reassurance, but also that resilience that comes from a capacity to live with faith and hope. The hope that comes from a deep faith is clear-eyed, thoughtful, and compassionate. It acknowledges that the outcome of the future is certain, which provides a basis for efforts to try to change what is to come for the better. May 2020 has not brought you the convocation ceremony you anticipated and looked forward to. But I pray that the events of this May will reassure each of you of the learning you have achieved over the course of your studies, and it enables you to better recognize the gifts you have to offer to the church and to the world, and that it deepens the hope and vision that led you to apply to this college in the first place. Congratulations and well done, each of you. I look forward to the opportunity to celebrate your achievements again in person. Until then, be safe and God bless. And now, friends, it's my honor to introduce the two honorees who are part of your convocation and will join us in 2020 as well. First, uh, for as an honorary uh, fellow, our Archbishop Colin Johnson, and for an honorary doctorate, uh, Archbishop Mark McDonald. Congratulations to them too, and we're honored that they are part of this convocation ceremony. Congratulations, my fellow graduates. I, like you, am deeply disappointed that we are meeting virtually today and not face-to-face -face in convocation. I was incredibly honored to be elected to an honorary fellowship at Trinity and look forward to addressing you in convocation some 43 years after receiving my MDiv from Trinity. What a strange time we're in. All classes taught online just like a big awkward seminar, but 
you actually get to see everyone's face, even as you check out their perhaps odd home decorating choices. Seniors learning that there's a new meaning for Zoom. Retired archbishops growing COVID beards. Happy hours popping up virtually, but where you get to hear all of the conversations. Even Venerable Trinity College postponing convocation. What strange times we're in. We're learning new skills and new jargon like social distancing and watching it evolve before our very eyes and ears within weeks as we quickly feel the awkward, awful, isolating impact of the words we use. We really cannot afford to socially distance others, even as we must learn to keep physically distant as we cultivate closer social connections. But what real challenges COVID-19 has forced on us? Unprecedented closures in government interventions, and even the upending of our most cherished traditions, Easter Eucharist, Passover Seders, Ramadan Iftars. Chilled, we watch the daily news conferences announcing ever more astounding measures to protect people, even as the grim statistics of new infections and disturbing deaths are ritually recited. We recognize that this is no longer an unexpected vacation or an opportune retreat time as we witness the sacrifices of frontline workers and the burdens financial, emotional and spiritual that are weighing heavily on so many, perhaps even you. And yet, and yet, what a fertile time it is this strange spring to reflect to recalibrate, to reimagine the way we are and will choose to be in the world when this crisis passes. Will we be the same? Do we really want to be the same? You have worked enormously hard for these past three years. And for many of you studying part-time, it's been an even longer slog to get to this place. You have earned your degree. Today, we should be celebrating that achievement. And yet, we are. Whether you get a fancy rolled piece of par parchment handed to you or an academic hood draped over your neck, you have already acquired the learning, the skills, the experience that have warranted this honor. Congratulations. Well done. Well deserved. Already, you are moving on to the next level of learning and skill development and practice that will take you on new adventures into new places. May these strange times be an exceptionally fruitful time for you, a time to find new ways to respond with creativity and innovation, vision and resilience, courage and compassion. May you reclaim the richness of our inherited traditions even as you find the freedom to create fresh expressions. And may you discover the deeply sustaining resources of your faith for a time like this. God bless you and keep you. I look forward to seeing you at Convocation next May. Till we meet again. I'm very happy to be able to send this greeting to you for our virtual Convocation. There are a number of things that we will miss about Convocation this year, but there are some things that are going to be even more acute and real. Our longing to be with each other, our sense of, of, of solidarity. Uh, for some reason, I, I expect these things to be stronger. I want to send my uh, affirmation that even as we gather in this way, that the living Word of God is present among us. And I pray that in everything that you do as you uh, go out and embrace a, a, a very different world, but a world that, that uh, needs each and every one of us to, to work and be together, as, as you go out into that, into that world, that you will carry with you the living, the sense of the living presence of God and the Word of God operating in your minds and hearts. And 
that this may be a, a, a strong experience for you that you also will carry with you in the, the, the things and the, the, the people that you encounter and into God's creation. So may God be with you. I will look forward to seeing you again and may, may the, the peace of God uh, be always with you. Graduates, we've now concluded a most unusual graduate ceremony, fitting perhaps for these unusual times. On behalf of the Trinity community, provost, dean, faculty, fellow students and staff, I congratulate you and wish you all the best as you face society's unprecedented circumstances of this your graduation. I once had the honor of serving as the Member of Parliament for Downtown Riding. I came to appreciate just how important our religious institutions are for providing social cohesion and harmony in our complex urban environment. Your predecessors entered that environment faced with daunting challenges which were then faced by the modern church. Today, however, your challenge is even greater as the environment in which you will operate is totally unfamiliar, in which you will call upon to exercise all of your skills as you provide that pastoral leadership for our fellow Canadians. I'd like to think that the education and inspiration you received at Trinity will fit you to meet those challenges. Indeed, even find in them new opportunities to help people face the spiritual challenges that this coronavirus has brought. In so doing, I can assure you, you go with our warmest wishes for success in your calling, so important to us all. And we look forward to celebrating with you in person next year's convocation. Convocatio de Misa Est. Trinity Class of 2020, Cooper and I wanted to extend to you our congratulations on successfully completing your programs. I know how hard you've worked for this, and I'm looking forward to seeing you all next year when we can gather and celebrate your well-deserved successes together. Until then, have a safe and wonderful summer, and I will see you all very soon. Take care.